Hello. Welcome to the Congregational Church of Henniker. This is our worship service for Sunday, May 24th, 2020. I'd like to share with you as we begin a few announcements. First, a special thank you from me to you. Your welcome this past week has been extraordinary. I'm so grateful for the wonderful banner that was laid before the church in the front yard, for the crew who came and beautified my office with paint and curtains and made it a special place ready for me to be. I'd also like to say thank you to Jessica, who has done an outstanding job navigating me through these first few days, and to Judy for answering my million questions and being a steadfast guide as I try to get my feet here on the ground. I'd also like to say thank you to all of you who have sent a note of welcome. It means so much to me that you reached out in this time of new beginning. I extend a special invitation. If you have not yet signed up for one of our coffee and connecting opportunities, please be sure to do so. We had our first Coffee and Connection uh, this past Tuesday. We had eight folks on the call, and it was a wonderful time of meeting each other, sharing stories, and starting this new relationship. If you'd like to join one of our upcoming events, there are three more that are scheduled. Just send Jessica an email, and she will make sure that you're on the list. I'm also really excited to let you know that beginning on Thursday, June 11th, our Bible study program will return. We plan to begin this starting with Zoom, and if the world allows us to gather in person as the time goes on, then we will most certainly do that. But it is sure to be a time of great conversation, learning, and most of all, connecting with each other. So again, please join us for our Bible study program beginning June 11th. To register, send Jessica an email. Last but not least, I've heard some... Uh, some thoughts and some reflections from a few folks who are interested in maybe having a Zoom worship service on Sunday mornings. The vision team is anxious to hear your thoughts and feedback about how we might have the most meaningful uh, worship experience for you in this evolving time. One of the joys about church right now is that we get to innovate and experiment. So keep your eyes open. We'll be sending out an email to gather some thoughts and insight from your experiences and your wishes, and we'll use all of that to guide our way forward. So thank you for those of you who've shared your thoughts, and I look forward to hearing from others about how we can continue to be the church here and now. Let us worship. Join me in prayer. Holy One, we awake this day to the promise of a new beginning. Across this beautiful planet, light is streaming. It pushes away the darkness and nurtures hope. All around us, new life is emerging, breaking forth in the budding sprouts of plants that nourish and sustain, calling out in the cry of a newborn baby, held in love and wonder, manifesting itself in partnerships that are moving to a new depth of connection and understanding. Indeed, all around us, life is emerging, and with it comes a deep revelation of you. God, you come to us anew each morning. Each day that passes, you extend an invitation to abide more fully. Your love knows no bounds. Your light cannot be contained. Your promise never fails. Not fear, not despair. Not isolation, not doubt, not even death can keep us from you. We give you thanks this day, loving Creator, for the countless ways you have stirred within us a faith that heals and a belief that transforms. Move with us along this path of life that we may proclaim the wonder of your works and the glory of your grace. Help us to be your disciples, disciples of love, shattering the structures of oppression and restoring the ways of justice. Guide us to build communities that not only welcome, but transform. Sustain us with your vision for a world in which all are made whole, where all are seen, where all are loved. We come before you now 
ready to listen, ready to worship, ready to be with you. In the fullness of Christ we pray. Amen. Our readings today come from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 14, as well as 51 to 57. And Mark chapter 12, verses 26 and 27. Hear now the word of God. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless, of course, you've come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as one of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. 
but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to be. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body, body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear now this reading from the Gospel of Mark. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the books of Moses in the story about the bush how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is God not of the dead, but of the living. The word of God for all the people. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? I don't know about you, but I have certainly felt death's sting. Around 12 years ago, at 2 in the morning, we received one of those calls that no one wants to get. Christy's mother had fallen the day before. And her father had taken her to the hospital and they'd done some tests and they found that she had a brain tumor. The moment of that call launched a year that was unlike anything we'd ever known. A year of hospital visits and surgeries, of extended stays with them in New Jersey as Christy cared tenderly for her mother. Watching Olivia grow up in this juxtaposition of the innocence of childhood combined with the sorrow of saying goodbye. I remember all of the important moments that year, the celebrations, the holidays, the family gatherings, each poignant with a sense of finality. And then that sad day a week after Thanksgiving, when she left us. I remember going to the funeral home the night before her funeral and standing beside her casket and being overwhelmed with grief, with tears, with sadness, with an emptiness unlike anything I had ever felt. I knew the sting of death. And it hurt. And yet, while her presence on earth ended that November day, we continue to feel her love, her inspiration, her wisdom, her presence. She remains a vibrant part of our life. And I understand now more than ever before those words that Paul was proclaiming. He said to the people of Corinth and he said to us that the power of God is unlike anything we've ever known. The power of what God has done through Christ. Christ walked on this earth. Christ lived. Christ taught. He healed. He loved. He laughed. He weeped. He felt anger. He felt sadness. Christ experienced all of life 
And yes, Christ knew what it was to be betrayed and to suffer and to die. But Christ rose. Christ rose from the dead and the world was changed. Life was transformed. Take this to heart. God's love for us, for all of us, is so immense, so expansive, so unbelievable. God came to dwell among us, to give fully of God's self for us. Even coming to know the depth of our suffering and our sorrow. And then in the glory of that Easter morning, God said, there is more. There is more to this life than the shadows and the sadness. There is more to this life than the fear and the worry. There is more to this life than the disappointment and the ache. There is hope. There is wonder. There is beauty. There is love. There is life. I believe in the power of transformation. I believe in the power of God's transformation. Things are hard now. Our daily norm has been altered in so many ways. In ways that we're still trying to understand and figure out. But I know that even in this difficult time, even in this unfamiliar moment, God's power to transform and to heal and to inspire is at work. This past Tuesday, we had our first coffee and connection time. A group of eight gathered on Zoom to share our stories and to talk about how this church has impacted us. What was clear to me in that call, that in this place, abundant in the Congregational Church of Henniker, there is love. And there is wisdom, and there is faith, and there is joy. And it is abounding and overflowing and longing to be shared. We stand ready in the midst of a great opportunity. I don't need to go out of my way to tell you just how negative and angry and hate-filled and despondent so much of our world is. So many people have grounded themselves in judgment and blame. But we've been given a different way. We have been given a way not of the world, but a way of God. A way in which darkness does not hold power. Where love wins. In Christ's resurrection, God not only showed that life remains after our time here on earth ends, but God showed that even now, here in this moment, God's ways can take hold. God's peace, God's promise, God's wonder, God's life is all around us. It's among us. It's in us. It's before us. It is guiding us. For God is not only a God of the dead, but God is a God of the living. And we are called to proclaim that, to celebrate that, to shine that light out in the world. And the world needs that truth now more than ever. The world needs to know God's love and God's power to sustain and to transform and to bring life. I long for the day that we'll all be able to gather together in our sanctuary. But I also believe that now, right now, we can still be the church. We can still shine that light of Christ out into the world. We can still proclaim the, the depth of God's love, the fullness of God's presence, the wonder of God's acclamation that says there is nothing that can keep us apart. There is nothing that can keep us down. There is nothing that can bind us up in sorrow and defeat, for joy is our way. So yes, there is sadness, 
and there is worry, and there is fear, and there is pain in this world around us. But we have been given the gift of Christ. We have been given the gift of love. We've been given the gift of hope and wonder. So let's take that gift and share it with all the world. Let us expand the wonder and the hope of this moment with all of our soul, with all of our heart, with all of our being. We are the church. We are the church that is here to serve. We are the church that is here to celebrate the beauty of each day. We are the church that is here to love, and we are the church that's here to remind the world that with God, all things can come to be. So go in peace, my friends. Go in hope, go in love, go and be God's children today and all. Pray with me. Holy Lord, we seek your blessing on our land and its people. On the farming communities who tend the soil and sustain the people. Bless them as they face this time of difficulty and change. On country towns that are losing hospitals, banks, businesses, and churches. 
on cities whose streets have grown silent and whose people are surrounded in fear. On our open plains and mountain communities where the connections and encounters that bring life and safety have grown still. God of mercy, disperse the enemies of human happiness and build up all that reflects your beauty, courage, and love. Holy friend, we seek your blessing on all nations around the globe. On places where people suffer from terrorism and war. On situations of neglect, abuse, or grave injustice. On those whose lives are devastated by disease, poverty, or famine. On all who suffer from cyclones, earthquakes, flood, fire, or virus. God of mercy disperse the enemies of human happiness and build up all that reflects your beauty, courage, and love. O Holy Lord, we seek your blessing on the church in every land, on the churches in places where the faithful are persecuted, on the churches where too much ease and prosperity has led to complacency on the churches that pr by prayer and deed are seeking the unity of Christ, on churches that are entrapped in their own prejudices or selfishness. O God of mercy, disperse the enemies of human happiness and build up all that reflects your beauty, courage, and love. Holy friend, we seek your blessing on our denomination and on this congregation on any whose deep fears hold them back from a wider love of your people, on those who are keenly exploring ways to work in partnerships that expand your word, on any whose personal illness or grief is all they can handle at this moment, on those who feel too weak in faith or too frail in body to see how their lives serve you, God of mercy, disperse the enemies of human happiness and build up all that reflects your beauty, courage, and love. Holy Lord, we seek to know the deep peace that comes from life grounded in you. Lead us in your ways of renewal and transformation that we may faithfully be your people in service to you and one another. This we pray in the words you have taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christ has risen. Death has found its defeat. Christ has risen. Sin has no hold. Christ has risen. The shattered are made whole. Christ has risen, and in him we find our purpose, our power, and our glory. Go and be alive in faith. Go and be alive in wonder. Go and be alive in love. Go and be.